let's talk about a song The vice is a fire To grab a lighter huh. And a cold drink Go, 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 go Grab a lighter and a cold drink Go, 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 go It's go time You heard it right It's go time Here on Pan Nerdia Hey, Ron here Pete over here and uh, welcome back, guys, to Go Time, the Game of Thrones discussion show for uh, each uh, week's new episode of Game of Thrones. Oh, and not only just any, this isn't any review, this is the review of reviews, right. because <clears throat> this is the review of the best episode of any series ever made, okay? Dare you say? Let, yes, Let he that dare sink say. in for a sec, okay? Yeah, I mean, everybody's got their opinions, but ultimately, I think, like, you cannot deny the triumph that they did with television uh, last mm-hmm. week. Uh, it was amazing. The, the episode was phenomenal. It definitely divided the community. Um, people are, are kind of this way and that way. And um, ultimately, you know, uh, it's uh, it's up in the air what you think. But and if, uh, you know, certain beings will come back into play and we'll delve into it. But ultimately, I think it was... An amazing episode, and it opened the door to these last three amazing episodes, all over an hour long, too. Yes. So, well, let's uh, get heated up here. And, uh, oh yeah, it's a little chilly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and just jump in. Um, we'll go ahead and do a preview uh, vid with you guys um, of some of these our favorite scenes as we just go along and talk about it today instead of opening with one. Mm-hmm. Um, there will be one pretty quick though because the shot um, I, I have for us. Um, really sets up everything, but we'll just go ahead and start with some uh, some slides as we kind of get rolling in on the episode. Um, and actually, this well, should be. Um, let me go ahead and start this. Well, as you're setting that up, I just want to say that right off the bat, before anything happens, the nerves just set in. You know, oh, yeah, on edge of our seats. I mean, the what, time. what you're what you're looking at here, you know, it's like it begins with Samwell swallowing his fears with dragon glass weapons in his hands, and Lyanna over there, um, Mormont is commanding the gate protection, and mm-hmm. Tyrion's walking around, and you could tell like you can even feel kind of dizzy from it too. Like Tyrion's kind of like you can tell like he's like, and it's like, oh my god, the moment is now. It's super he's quiet. Grabs the wine, the wine, grabs sex, the weapon, yeah. you know, and like everyone is making the audience more and more nervous as the seconds tick by. Not yep. minutes, seconds. And they do a great job. Again, <clears throat> you'll notice this a lot with this episode if you watch it, that they do a lot of seamless transitions, not only between characters, but scenes to where you just feel like you're there the whole time. And uh, there's more complaints about you know the lighting in this episode, but again, the it's li- all about the, putting you in that battle. The darkness and the quiet. Yeah. You know, not, in, not until they're interrupted by the dragons flying by and the unsubtly unsullied lining up right but like before that and after that just the quietness and the darkness just intensified everything for me everything and especially once john and danny got up and you got to see what the battlefield looks like and that speaking of that let's go ahead and take a look at the battlefield oh. um and uh what they had rolling there let me go ahead and get map talk up okay so um as you guys recall the battlefield here mm-hmm. Let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit. The triangles of the Dothraki with yeah. Mormont and, of course, Ghost leading the way. Yep, so we had uh, Mormont and Ghost um, over here, kind of in the forefront. Let me see if I can get this pen to work. Oh, they're not the triangles at the top? There we go. Oh, there are. They're over there. They're right over in this area, um, right around here. Um, and then, yeah, all the Dothraki are lined up here. Then we have, of course, the Unsullied all the way around here. Mm-hmm. All right. Let me go ahead and zoom out here for everybody. All right. And then over here we have um, Brienne of Tarth and Jamie, and their uh, left flank, I guess you should, uh, could a- a- call it. As you're swooping on that, mm-hmm. it's pointing down lower up there. Oh, but at least the red's going. Yeah, the red's going. Yeah, I don't know why that tracking's off. I apologize, yeah. guys. Just pay attention to the red as we see. Yeah, speak. the red is, that's where we're kind of going. And then over here um, in the front, um, to the right flank, that's where we have uh, Tormund, um, you know, Sam, you have Dolores Ed, 
all those guys Brand. lined up. Brand, I don't know, Brand's over here. Oh, Brand's over, over there yeah. with Jamie, that's right. Um, and then we have Brand over here in Godswood, down here by Pete's shoulder. Um, that's where uh, he's hanging out at. How can I move it a little bit? But, um, and of course they have Theon Garden in there. So just a reminder to help everybody real, remember where everybody's at. All right. Um, and then D John and Danny, of course, are up top, um, kind of waiting. Their whole deal is to wait mm -hmm. for uh, Sir Davos to flag them to light the trenches, mm -hmm. which a lot of people are kind of. I'm, that's one thing I noticed is a little weird. They should have had, you know, they got these trenches that are surrounding the castle. They kind of should have put the trenches way out here. I feel like. Or at least doubled up, like made or doubled a, up, a, right? A, a outer line and an inner line, right? Oh, you know, absolutely. So very interesting, but regardless, that's where John and Danny were waiting. Oh yeah, and then you had a uh, good old uh, Leanna Mormont sitting here at the gates with her men guarding that's guarding right. the gates of Winterfell. So all the fronts are ready. And man, did they really set that up to be scary? I mean, they showed the the darkness that they face. I mean, and who comes riding out of the darkness when they're all set up and quiet? Oh, you know, Melisandre. Old oh, Mel, Mel. That's right. Uh, Millie Mel herself. Ever so quietly, like gallop, not even gallops, like they can't even hear the hoofs of the horse, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, you could barely even hear the breathing of the horses lined up in the Dothraki. was so quiet. Yeah, so, I mean, so quiet and, and spooky and unsettling, and then she comes out. It makes it even more creepy. Like, where'd you come from? Right. How did they not see you? But you kind of feel as a fan that's watched every episode that, like, she's here to give at least a bit of a chance. Right. You know, some sort of bigger chance than they've already have which is not much of one <laughs> yeah and uh man does she bring it with uh something oh, yeah. that's a little nod to perhaps the fiery hand uh which is mentioned in the books um she brings us uh, some good old fire magic yeah she tells uh jonah mormont to tell the dothraki since you know their tongue to raise their swords or their weapons whatever yep. and she grabs onto one real nice and tight <laughs> <laughs> she's right. Like, she, and she and speaks she that old dead high Valyrian. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and uh, Jorah, he did seem kind of a little like off put for a minute. He's like, he even was like, where the hell did she come from? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll tell him the Razor Swords. Mm -hmm. uh, but then everybody, I mean, everybody in, on our side looked up like, okay, this is this is awesome. We might have a chance here. And Ghost looked the <clears> most <throat> intense. He <clears> was <throat> like totally honed in and focused on all the sights, smells, and sounds that were. Yeah. Pretty much a million dead people. <laughs> right, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, because what is he going to do? Um, yeah. But alas, they uh, they get torched up, and they uh, get ready to ride in the battle, and here Perfect they are timing. getting torched up right now. Um, and I got a cool shot of when it goes back to John and Danny up on the, the yeah, out, yes. outlook, and they, you see like it's almost like a big arrowhead, like yeah. a big cursor of fire. Mm -hmm. um, but man, did they not know what they were up against? Did yeah. they hit literally a wall of... White Walkers. Yeah, I mean, or we, zombies. They, I mean, they don't whites. let us. They don't let us see the whites right away. But you know, a, a, a whole bunch of the horses that the Dothraki um, were riding, like came, came running back to Winterfell, yeah. as well as Mormont himself, who already looked injured. Yeah, and, he's already like, no, 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 and like tremored, whatever. He like, he like saw the look on on Jonah's face, and yeah. he was like, oh, that's not good. Yeah, Tor <laughs> Torman was like. Uh, uh, how is it? And George is like, nah, dude. Yeah. We are yeah. effed. Yeah. We are royally effed. Yeah. There's literally a wall. And then, before they know it, everybody's getting ready. Graham's got his helmet on. And then the wave comes. And literally, I mean, you see the side view. They're like stacked four on top of each other, riding a big wave of, of whites. I, in. I call it a tidal wave of, of whites. I mean, really, like, it was, I, you know, as deep <clears throat> as deep can go and about ten high. I mean, really seemed that way. Yeah, just rolling in the intensity, you know. But uh, before they actually attack, Malisandra walks in, and you know Davos lets her in. Open the gate, and uh, very interesting connection that rolls in with the rest of the episode. Mm -hmm. As Malisandra walks in and says to Davos, "Don't worry, I'll die before dawn." She looks up and notices Arya. Um, oh, there's that shot of the flaming uh, swords. Um, she looks up. And sees Arya makes like eye contact with her, and you know it's that it's that it's always that shot Melisandre has when it's like across courtyards, and there's yeah. like heat in front of the person's face, making it all wave. Music kind of changes a little bit, yeah. you know. Something mysterious is happening. But you know, as uh, Jamie <clears throat> and and his group are watching the Dothraki riding away, that's another cool camera shot, mm -hmm. and you see all the fire like going left, right, left, right, because they're yeah. swinging their swords and whatnot. Well, that was spooky, because then you see them all flicker out. And it's just like a bunch of fireflies dying. Yeah. Until there's like one flame left, and then nothing. 
And once Danny sees that happen, she can't really hold back anymore. That whole plan of waiting to light the trenches or waiting until the Night King shows up, because yeah. that's what John's like, dude, she's the like, Night King's going to be here. And drop she's like, that plan, the dead are here. She's like, no, dead's here. My fucking half my men are gone already. I mean, not half, but her, all of her Dothraki are pretty much done. So she jumps in. As well as she should, because that tidal right. wave we were talking about rolls in on our heroes, right. and then you know she swoops in and... What a majestic scene. What a beautiful scene that Speaking was. of scenes, uh, we got that opening scene coming right up. Hey, what's going on, Asa? Good to see you. Thanks for stopping by, man. Um, we're going to go ahead and roll over to an, a great scene right to where we were talking about when Danny says, I have had enough. I'm coming to save my people. And here we are. Enjoy. And she just saw him get decimated pretty much. And... Gorgeous shots here, by the way. Yeah. Not only do you get to see this deadly storm coming in, yeah, the incoming blizzard stalls the dragon's progress, but, uh, you know, here comes Danny anyway. And the way the blizzard was there is because John uh, noticed the White Walker generals on the edge, and he went to go for him. And right before he got close enough to do a little, uh, you know, Dracarys, uh, the snowstorm came. That means uh, the Night King is afoot. He's there. He's mm -hmm. he's puppeteering up he in the skies. He brings the blizzard storms wherever he goes. That and crows, I guess. Yes. Um, I'll go back to the slideshow. But here. yeah, at that same time, though, the crypts add Sansa to the mix. You know, that, that's oh, about yeah. that point in time, Sansa ends up going into the crypts. Yeah, you know, Arya's just like, you gotta go. You yeah. can't be out here. I know you want to stay with your people, but here, take this dagger. Use, use the pointy end, and uh, we gotta get ready. And that's when that wave comes and just collides. And immediately, you're just, we're just, again... We get little bits of relief and little bits of oh, moments, but then it just hits you again, just like you're in that battle. It's, it's chaos. Just it's everywhere. Overwhelming. It's just overwhelming. The, the the amount of dead that come, and while well, we have our first our first main character dies, yeah, saving Samwell, and it's yeah. none other than Dolores Head. Yeah, Ed. yeah. I almost said uh, Sid, sorry. Sid. Uh, yeah, the nine 999th Lord Commander. Um, <laughs> he is gone now. Who's gonna be one thousand? Um, <laughs> Right, if they even have it. But dude was uh, yeah. got killed. Of course, we thought he was gonna die, but um, you know, he was the first one to go saving Sam. And Ooh. Sam, I think at that point realized I gotta wake up in this battle, not be so hazy. But they continue to show this constant slaughter. I mean, and then of course you have like your mega heroes that are just surviving everything. They are, but I mean, uh, there's moments where you think like Bran's gonna get eaten to death. Yeah, and she's screaming she so saved. bad. You think Sam's gonna get stabbed in the eye, but he gets saved by Ed, right. and then Ed dies, and that was pretty pretty brutal to be looking right at at Ed, and then and you then, see the knife come like through. I don't. I can't remember behind. if it came through. Was his he head? coughing up the blood, or was it coming? Yeah, I think I, it face? was coughing up. Cause I watched oh, it. Yeah. I kept watching it back. I was like, how did he die? I think he just got stabbed like in his back somewhere. But Samuel ran off, and shortly thereafter, there was the mass retreat, protected yep. by the Unsullied, who protected the retreat. Flaming arrows as well were right. protecting the retreat, and Melisandra, you know, lighting up the pits. Which I'll let the you trench. Do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so it was just a crazy scene because they had to retreat ultimately, get everybody behind. You know, Leanna Mormont steps in a little bit. Get everybody up behind. She's making great commands too, yep. just like anybody else out there. Mm -hmm. But uh, Grey Worm has to make the ultimate decision because he steps back to help everybody get um, over the trenches and behind the walls, and then he has to make that decision to break the, yeah. the trench bridge and how many of his, his men, men? How many of his men are just going to leave on the other side? Right. To help buy some time. He did get a lot. To retreat, though. He did. He did good. Yeah. And he, may, I think he did right ultimately in the end. But, yeah, you know, like that actor, um, Jacob Anderson, I think his name. R&B uh, star. Yeah, the R&B star. Uh, <laughs> he uh, he did it was great acting there, man. Because it, the snow, snowstorm was so violent. It was so chaotic with the whites. They, you know, Davos couldn't get Danny to see the torches to light the trench. They couldn't get flaming arrows on the trench. And anybody yeah. who ran up there with a the torch. The snow was just like putting out all the arrows that yeah. were hitting. Yeah. It was that brutal. So Malisandre came out after seeing Grey Worm and another great acting scene. And of um, course, she said the prayer like 10 freaking times. Yeah. And it was the very last instance where she almost got yeah. killed herself and then. <laughs> It was made another beautiful scene yeah. with music and and the way the fire effects. really that's where like it paid off that the scenes yeah. were so dark because when those fire scenes came up and then the dragon fire and all that that's when it pays off that's when it shows you how Absolutely. beautiful and artistic this director is and and they didn't even have to have the overhead shots 
but you know it would have been fuck right perfect but mwah, oh my god the overhead shots just like the icing on the cake man it was yeah awesome well even the actress who plays miles hondra i forget her name but um even her acting, like the way her voice, you can feel it in her voice, like trembling. And they show those cool shots with like she was close to her face, and mm-hmm. you know it was it was brilliant. It was awesome. And then you got another sign of relief for a minute. Okay, the whites are back. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. it was getting monotonous. A little bit. Yeah. I can't speak today. It was though. I mean, mm-hmm. it, but that's how they're and they do a good job with it through this episode, breaking it up like they that. They did. And they did very good. They break it up here with a nice little uh, well, scene in Godswood. S- Sansa talks with Tyrion. Oh, in the crypt first, that yes. That crypt, and she's like, you know, you were the best of them about all the husbands. Yeah. And he's like, what a terrifying thought. Yeah, he's like, uh, like stop the being one witty. one piece of comedy in the whole episode, I think. I did like their interactions this episode. I really did. Yeah. Though I hope uh, Missande doesn't go tell on uh, them two for talking about Daenerys. Because it wasn't really like they were talking behind her back. They are just joking. Well, she said her piece. She was like, yeah, you're right. We would all be dead already. If yeah, but that's her. why I think I think she took it like real dry. Like She thought yeah. like, it hurt her. She's kind of like... Well, she should have. She's about to die. Why not speak right. of your brain? But speaking of brain, Bran has a brain. Brain, brain, brain. And uh, he pieces out to warg and to ravens, and who knows what after that. Yeah, there's a lot to be said about that, but you know, he lets Theon know that he's there for the, all the right reasons. Everything brought him to this spot, mm-hmm. and you know, he's home now. Yeah, Theon um, wanted to apologize one official last right. time, and he's like, no, man, everything you've ever done, everything you ever went through brought to you this moment, and that's home. Yeah, and that was a great scene, man. I like the scenes with Theon and Bran this episode, but yeah, Bran goes up and works into a conspiracy of ravens. Um, that's what they're called, by the way. Oh. A flock of crows or ravens or a conspiracy. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And I thought I was quite the bird expert. Ugh. But, uh, yeah, they get a nice shot of the Ice King or the Night King for the first yeah, time. Shit gets extra real at that point. Yeah, I mean, the, but gorgeous shots again. I mean, he has some cool shots where he's putting his hand he, up he in front. He commands the dead to sacrifice themselves to make little... Uh, entryways across the fire pits yeah and it's just like okay he is totally puppet master right now yeah um well and then everybody realized they're all fucked again and um yeah well it's start manning the walls yeah. because Man they're the walls gonna come the, up the dead are gonna stockpile themselves up the wall until they ascend over the top and well it's hack and stack time yeah world war z style i mean yeah, literally totally. to where they're climbing on top of each other you got everything from the meaty whites to the the skeletors um Clanking up, you have them all there, man. Um, we'll get into it later, but this is the beginning of the raining zombies. I mean, it just begins to kind of rain zombies, but a little bit. Later it gets more on, later, but yeah. Way more. But there's so many. I mean, yeah. just the fact that there's so many already. I mean, the fact that they can pile up on top of each other and cross a fire bridge and then pile up on top of each other just to get on some walls tells you how many of these things there are. Mm-hmm. And there will be more later. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Well, then uh, what else happens? Well, even the hound actually around this time starts freezing up. And Arya puts the glass bow to uh, to work finally. We get to see that. Should and we we'll see that, that right now. All righty. We got a special scene for you guys. Oh, just think about all the training, all the experiences, all the things she's been through her whole life has come to this moment with this bow with dragon glass tips. Oh, I didn't really just do that. And boy, oh boy, was she ninja. Yeah, she totally was ninja. Um, let me put this up in front of this here. Alright, here we go. Nice. Yep, she just comes in, chops her head off, and starts hacking and slashing. And you notice she splits her weapon once she goes into the corridor and of the to room. Use it, to use it there's like Yeah, to have better better room, yeah. She splits it so she doesn't get it caught on walls and shit. Perfect, perfect weapon. In all spaces she can attack. And blast. And then Barrett's like, Clagain! <laughs> Snap out of it, man! And he's like, fuck off! There's no way we're gonna have win he, this. He says, fuck off, you stupid whore! <laughs> yeah, that's kind of his thing. Well, then, of course, one of the another one of our heroes dies shortly after that. The giant walker zombie breaks through the gate and, well, wallops many of Lyanna's men, and, as well as Lyanna, and, well, she goes down bravely and... How awesome, though. They set her up with quite the scene. I believe yes. the producers and writers had her only written in for one scene, period, yeah. in Game of Thrones. And they loved her so much. They're like, no, we have to like use her as much as we can. And Man, they really use it to the fullest. It was hard to watch because he was squeezing, the giant yeah. was squeezing her. And she was like puking up blood at that point. Just all her organs and bones are being crushed, but she has just enough power to get her 
long dagger and stab that thing right through the one eye it had. You know, the crazy thing is, all these things can die with just, like, fucking little a paper brush. cuts. Yeah, a brush. Shit. I was telling my wife that, too. I was like, all the Valerian steel in a dragon glass, all they have to do is, like, barely touch them. Like, blah, 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 yeah, and the, ma- yeah. the magic just kills them that yeah. way. Right. So, that's really one thing you got to realize. Like, when they're, like, getting super piled up, all they got to do is kind of hold their sword off, and they could probably, like, just press and slice, like, mm-hmm. four of them right there on top but of But when them. you think about <laughs> you it, know? the dragon's helping out. Right. Melisandre helping out. The fact they have dragon glass that helps out a lot. Right. All three of those things, all it really did was buy them time. It was all this time, yeah, yeah. because there was so many. And they needed it, though. Lines. I mean, without that, I mean, they would have been toast immediately. All right. So every minute counted. Yeah, man. And then uh, as Arya was being a badass, she kind of got a little stumbly here or there because there, she was even getting overwhelmed. Got a little oh, right. damage on her head, even, and a little wobbly. And found herself in the central library there. In a very spooky seat setting. Right. And, well, that was also what snapped uh, Sandor, Clanglane, or uh, the Hound, out of his little uh, freak out was seeing Arya run because well, Beric's like, Beric's try to like, convince her. Yeah, look at her up there. Like, tell her that it's impossible to the, win this battle. Right. So he's yeah. like, fuck it. Or and then, the Great War, I should say. This is not a battle. Right. <laughs> this is definitely the Great War. But, but yeah, then, so she's in the library, right? Which is awesome because it switches, it, it, it switches, switches pace again. Pure horror movie, Dude. slow paced yeah. horror movie, like perfect. I think most of most of us fans jumped a couple of times, but especially when she came around the corner and just immediately <laughs> did that. And all the cool. goops came out oh, of the, the mouth. Of that oh, one. goop slit! Oh, oh yeah, that, that was, was a nice traditional zombie slay. That was that nice. You may have seen similar slayings and other. Things like Walking Dead and other right. movies and whatnot. It was it was it was well done. Yeah, just the whole scene. I mean, you really got to see how quiet she is. I mean, the fact that even moving on to that desk so quick, she was that quiet. But then the drips of her blood are what causes yeah, the noise. Yeah, pretty yeah. crazy. I mean, gosh, every little but thing awesome added. scene, man. I mean, and then of course, even after she thinks she's safe, after the video game trials that she went through, uh, they're <laughs> still freaking after totally. her. Totally. And we get that scene of her running through the corridors finally. Yeah, but once she, as she's running through those corridors finally and all that, she bumps into the hound and uh, and Barrick. And Barrick. Barrick with a sweet fucking yeah. sword throw, flaming sword throw. Yes. I loved that, that dude. That was awesome. Yeah, and then he, he threw that thing like a small dagger. And it was, he's like, big ass sword. It was fucking sweet. I loved it, dude. Um, and then, of course, he serves his purpose. He does. Melisandre's like, he's done everything he had to from day one. You guys don't realize it, but now he's served his purpose. Mm-hmm. And eventually, as the hound's freaking out, waiting for the door to come down, right. Melisandre says to Arya, what do we tell? Yeah. Death. Well, what they do first is, uh, yeah, after they get in, and obviously Beric's just, he's dead because he got stabbed a bajillion times. Yeah. I mean, literally. But this time, no one's bringing him back. No one's bringing him back this time. But yeah, she, she looks up at Masandra and is like, uh, I remember his, you. And she's was, like, I know you too. That was his 20th death, by the way. It Was no, was it 19 he, or 6, six times or well, 19 they times? They kept joking about 19 times already. Oh, yeah. So this is either 19 or 20. Or, Who knows? He's died yeah. a lot, though. Um, but uh, yeah, basically, uh, you have a couple... Uh, in situations with Malisandre. Sorry about that. Trying to get that freaking out of my mouth. A uh, situation with Malisandre where you remember, like, oh yeah, they did. She did say that to Arya back in like season three. Um, oh yeah, I remember that shit. Not only with uh, the, the eyes, the colored eyes, yeah. But then she uh, says the thing that uh, Ferio said, uh, her swordmaster for season one. What do we say to the god of death? Not, Not today. today. And that was like so. And she just went Terminator Two mode, and then off she went. Yeah. As she heard, like, blue eyes, yeah. she's like, oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, she hadn't killed anyone with blue eyes yet. Who has blue eyes? Hmm. Right. <laughs> you know, so it's just yeah. kind of like, okay. Well, in the in, in that, honestly, when the first time I watched it, at least, I didn't make that connection yet. I mean, I made the connections of her meeting Melisandre, but after she said blue eyes, I wasn't thinking, oh, yeah, Arya's killing the Night King right I now. I definitely was not. I was on board with you. I did not think that at all. But the fact that you look at it a second time and blue was the third one that she mentioned after right. she took Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was pretty pretty clever. Um, well, the Battle of Ice and Fire takes to the sky, dragon versus dragon, and, well, crash landings and whatnot. 
Yeah, I mean, there was some really awesome dragon fights. I know we skipped over one earlier. It was like the first dragon fight after John first saw him. Because John landed in the Godswood for a little bit. It was so yeah. crazy up in the first sky. Up next to Godswood, it's like, hmm. Because he finally got a shot of the castle. It was so crazy. Not even John and Daenerys, even though they were riding next to each other, they couldn't communicate, right? It was that oh, wild Oh, that's right. There. They bumped into each other. In a few times. Blizzard. And even after they bumped, they still couldn't talk. They could just barely see the other dragon shadow, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then once they were flying around, John's the only one who noticed the gods would, the light, and he's just like, Danny, I'm going, and she didn't, she doesn't even know that he was saying anything, and he went down there. So they got split up. John finally left the gods would because the Night King came down and was like, bet you can't catch me, and then basically like boo-boo kind of shit, and then he fucking flew up and made, basically pulled John away from the gods would, which is totally what he wanted to do. And then they soar up in the sky. Beautiful shots of the Beautiful moon. shots and trifecta. All three dragons are featured in this part. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, above the clouds. Above Viserion the blasting with the blue fire. Danny not getting burnt. Maybe he wasn't even that close and to the her. the fact that because it's a zombie dragon, the flames are coming out of his neck oh. as he's powering up before he blows out the blue flame. I mean, oh, my God, the detail. Yeah, dude. And then Ooh. later they get in another fight over the gods. Well, that's when John decides to attack um, the Night King via dragon claws and teeth mm-hmm. and uh they kind of do a little rustle in the air right over the god's wood uh uh Rhaegal, john's dragon ripping some chunks off of viserion not with viserion getting some chunks off Rhaegal, but Rhaegal rips half of viserion's face off which was sweet and then as oh, an you know eye what that's wasn't... kind of reminiscent to who the dragon's named after? Oh, Viserion. Didn't half his face get melted? Melted, basically. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, and then Nike's on there trying to get a good, like, wait, just hold on for a minute. I need to fucking throw my spear. And then before he even gets a chance, Danny comes in with Drogon and just fucking, you know, because he's so big, Drogon's so huge, yeah. just dominates it's, Viserion. Nike falls off like, hey. Yeah, and his little spear, like, sorry about you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it was, I, ice spear. I laughed gone. when that happened. I really did the first yeah. time seeing it because it was just, he just has no motion on his face. Yeah, he falls. Like, he just, he's, he's like, mm, like a crash test double. Like, hmm, how did I get here? Yeah, right. Um, and then, you know, you got uh, Drogon just totally munching the neck of Viserion, like, yeah. Breaking its already broken body. Well, then, of course, one of the scene of the, the scene that we were all waiting for, because like Bran said, no one's ever tried having a oh, dragon yeah. blow fire on the Night King. And oh, well, yeah. Danny does her uh, uh, Drakarius uh, command, and what the hell? She blasts the hell out of the Night King. And well, what happens after the fire kind of disperses? Oh, he smirks a smile. So now we know the Night King is impervious to blue. And red fire. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, sorry, guys. I thought my slideshow should have been way longer. I don't know why it's always already at the beginning of it again. I had way more pictures. I don't know why they didn't load them all in. I do apologize about that. All these pictures should be showing. I don't know why they're not for some reason. Well, either way. Whatever. All I know is that John was on the ground because his dragon crash landed. Right. And Danny tried to burn up the Night King. And John was only about 50 yards away from the Night King, so he's charging towards him, only to see the Night King turn around and stare at him about 10, 20 feet away. And he does the, uh, well, he did the same thing he did at Harhome, and he just raised the dead. Yeah. All the fresh dead. The dead that were already fighting that were killed, they're gone. They're just piles of bones, but... All the people that fought to begin with that were that died are now on the Night King's side. So the Night King, uh, you can see. Uh, well, I can't really show you right now because I messed up something on my map at the moment. So anyway, but basically, if you guys look at the map between the two rows where that circle is, where I circled where Lan is earlier, um, that's where the uh, confrontation right happens. here. Yeah, that's where basically John runs into um, the Night King and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we all kind of predicted that he wouldn't die from Dragonfire, but we'd hope he'd at least get hurt a little bit. Mm-hmm. Maybe melt his weapons. Well, we got a smirk smile out of him. I mean, I like the, the smirk that's smile. That's the closest thing to a word that's come but out of him. <laughs> pretty much any sign of emotion, yeah. right? Um, and then, of course, we wanted the battle with him and John, but... But he had to raise the dead again. He, he had to was, go ahead and do know, that. He was kind of being a little bitch, but you know what? He knows John would beat him. That's the thing. He know, He saw John fight too many times. Mm-hmm. He saw John kill his 
generals with that badass Larian sword. Like, mm-hmm. you just can't. It's not happening. Yeah, he's playing his cards. He knows That's what's it. up. He's being the Night King. Like yeah. as much as we all wanted fan service like that, he was being the Night King. So you kind of have to be like, okay, yeah, he do that shit. Yeah, and, and you like, just knew you that at this point everything's escalated so much. Why not just go with the distance? And that's what ends up happening. But uh, Night King takes his uh, his lieutenant or Captain White Walkers into Winterfell, and there was a there was a picture there. Of this like orangish, yellowish, like snowy background, and you see all the generals now off their horses. Yeah, that was a great shot. Walking with, and they just it looked like. I mean, I wanted to put all kinds of different music, music to behind it. it. Everything <laughs> from rap to heavy metal. Like I was just so like eighties, like, like hair oh, metal, walk, like exactly. walking music. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, that's how I. Yeah, I totally did. Like they're like rock stars it's like, walking. Oh in. dang! Here yeah. they come. Like you thought things were bad, they're gonna get really bad now. But you know what? These White Walker lieutenant captains, they didn't fight at all. They didn't fight at they all. They just looked stoic and evil. And, and I think that's kind of where they were going, too. Like, they kind of knew, like, we have to be back because they, they'll the, kill us quick. They're the royal guard, basically, for the Night King. So, like, we just do what he says and go where he wants us to line up. Exactly. He, basically, their job was to protect him when he went in for Bran. And ultimately, too, I think that's the writers want us to realize, like, how royally fucked we were with all the undead. There was that many undead whites that we don't have to worry about the generals. That's how f we are. And then the Night King mm-hmm. raises them, and they all come back to life inside the, the castle walls and outside the castle walls. Like, at that point, that's when it really starts. It's rain and whites. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not hallelujah. <laughs> oh, fuck shit is right. But, yeah, you know, the dead ri- rise from not only the inside of Winterfell and outside of Winterfell, but... From the crypts as well yep. to devour the innocent, yeah. leaving Tyrion and Sansa and Versi and everyone else like shaking in their boots and hiding in whatever crevices they can find. Yeah, it was. Um, it's definitely... not what we were hoping for, was it? With the we were, we were saying <laughs> if any, if the crypts, we were pretty much for sure the crypts. Something's going to happen in it. Yeah, we were jacked that, up that like hopefully... the spirits would help, or they would have an extra tunnel to get out. Right, and none of that. None of yeah. that. No, they just most of the people it in the just... crypts got slaughtered. Yeah, and Bad everybody turned to worse. Everybody inside <laughs> pretty much got slaughtered, and uh, I mean, shit. Even when uh, Daenerys came in and helped John for a minute. And blew some fire on the ground for him. Uh, rather close to John too, by the way. I'm surprised he didn't get burnt. <laughs> Targaryen, maybe. Uh, mm-hmm. He, she makes a path for him to run in to get Bran. And well, this is one part that I was a little annoyed with, just because she stayed on the ground too long. But all the whites end up jumping on her and piling onto her, um, and end up knocking her off the dragon. Meanwhile, Drogon's like tries to fly away. Yeah, that looked like it reminded me of like have you ever seen a, a mother spider with its young oh, all right. latched onto the mother yes. spider, all the little tiny itty bitties. I mean, that's what the dead looked like on yeah. top of Dragon. I mean, he was trying to whip him off of this and this, and he did a good job, and he got away, he lived. But in the meantime, Danny gets it, thrown off, and she's and in the middle it. of the worst part possible. Well, actually, it's probably worse inside the walls, but. But here comes Jorah! Yeah, all by herself, and who else but the one person you want to be there with her because you know John's not going to be there. And some people were saying, like, oh, Jorah came out of nowhere. Look, he really didn't because about yeah, was... about a couple minutes earlier, when she was about to go blast the Night King with fire, mm-hmm. there was a scene where Jorah's fighting and he looks up because he hears the dragon call close and he goes run towards it. So he's like, oh, Khaleesi's by me. I'm going to go make sure she's okay. So that's, and then he did. He came into the rescue. And I have to say, Jonah Mormont's character, his arc was spectacular. Yeah. I mean, from beginning to end, he had a great ending. And, you know, it's unfortunate that we're not going to see him in episode four and especially five because of the whole King's Landing battle we're looking forward to. But yeah, Sir Jorah will be missed. He, he will literally be missed was like one of, of the best all, knights. Right, out of all the people that died in episode three, that was definitely the toughest. I mean, his, his, There's his somebody cousin else. was hard, too. Yeah, yeah, his cousin was hard. There's somebody else, too, that I was very upset with, but but not not very upset. Like, why? But, like, I, I got upset watching the death, but we'll get to that here hmm. soon. But uh, Jorah, yeah, it was very sad. Um, but before he even died... Well, we have John uh, running in to save Bran. That's right. Theon and his Ironborn defend the war. Oh yeah, that the, part too. The, the warging Bran right now as Danny's flaming a path for John. Right. Yeah, that's right. So I, I think that's that's kind of happened first before uh, Mormont went down. But yeah, Mormont doesn't go down until the very end. We just right. kind of talked about it because he comes out and saves her, and it's awesome because even as he's fighting, Danny even grabs a, a 
a, a, a dragon big sword, ass uh, a dragon, dragon glass, glass sword mm-hmm. yeah and starts fight, which is awesome because she's not complete damsel in distress you know exactly um but yeah it shows theon finally getting attacked the the whites he's doing a great job um, he gets to the point where he even gets overwhelmed a little bit. Right. Yeah, but once she burns the way for Bran, or Bran, burns the way for John to get into Winterfell because his main goal is to get to Bran, you know, then we get to the whole Drago, Dragon shaking yeah, off right. the dead and all that, right. and Danny falls off, leaving her in peril, but, you know, Jonah Mormont's there, and her own dragon Jorah. glass sword, Jorah, her own dragon glass sword, uh, she didn't really use it until towards the end of the scene there, but she did use it a couple times. But yeah, she used it some good times, especially when he was like basically just using his body to block some of the sword and the shots. The fact that he gets stabbed right through the middle and just takes his sword to prop himself back up. Oh and yeah, stand up multiple straight. times he gets stabbed and sliced, dude. Yeah. It's, it's like it's, it's a he gets wrecked. I mean, he takes it to the point where he can literally not do anything anymore. Well, the coolest camera shot scene since the Battle of the Bastard happens next. Oh yeah, and right. So in the preface, this and you will we'll see some of it. This is the body drop uh, point, like when it's the waterfalls of, yeah. of white. Once John is in the center of Winterfell, anything behind him is just <laughs> waterfalls of white. Three sixty <laughs> zombie bodies just falling from the sky. He sees Tormund and uh, Gendry fighting on mounds of them. He mm-hmm. sees Sam like crying on mounds of them. It's yes. pretty messed up. So yes. and then we get some cool uh, scenes. But here you go. Like, all right, look how wild that is. Look at the bodies drop. You can see them behind. It's just crazy. Yeah. There's Grey Worm. You can focus on one thing, or you can just look at the background and be thoroughly entertained. There's Jamie and uh, uh, Brianne fighting, and there's this cool John's cool scene right here. Stepping through. I love this camera turnaround right here. Boom, that is so awesome. Blah! Gets up, and oh, well, he can't go without a bunch of baby ah. arms coming through some This is awesome. He closes the and blah! <laughs> yeah, dude, it was great. Great scene there. Pick um, every moment. It's all intense. It was just so intense, man. And, like, uh, man, did that add to the intensity? And some people are like, what did John do? This? John did so much this freaking battle, dude. Everyone was barely holding on when But he that's was the there. thing. Like, especially after on. the point the Night King rose everybody back. I mean... Everybody was against the wall. You saw that there. Everybody was pushed against the freaking yeah. wall. I mean, man. mounds on one side of the wall, mounds on the other side of the wall, mounds in just the middle of the courtyards. I mean, just mounds of bodies everywhere. And then we enter the final scene oh, via yeah. just all music, pretty much. Well, yeah, Theon runs out of arrows, and they he has pretty much his last goodbye from Bran, because he's like, you're a good man, and thank you. Well, dude, even before that, he takes out, like... So many whites by himself. Oh, he sure does. Like to the point where he's like, oh, he's like throwing up blood because he's so like tired. Mm-hmm. And that's when Brands is like, "You're a good man." Yeah. And that's like all thing yeah, I needed to hear. You. you know. Yeah, but meanwhile though, as that's happening, you're right. The music kicks in. It's kind of West West World ish piano yeah. music. Yeah. And I wonder. I should look into it to see. Is it a reproduced song just in piano kind of like Westworld no no it's all original score but you know Tyrion and Sansa are saying they're what looks like their own goodbyes with their eyes and that's when that's another choked up moment because you kind of feel like watching it for the first time I thought they were going to like kind of take each other's lives yep that's what I thought I watched it with Megan and she's like oh my god they're going to kill themselves. They're going to commit suicide together. Right, basically, yeah, because like, they I thought they were even, that ass. I didn't even think of that. That's I was the just first thought so, I had. I was just so caught up in them, like, saying goodbye with their eyes and like, holding their hands that, like, that was enough for me to think that they're going to die. I wasn't thinking how they were going to die. I was right. just thinking, this is it. Yeah, that's what I thought, dude. Super I was, intense. I was like, yeah, that's... Uh... They're grasping their hands and their weapons at the same time. Right, yeah, it was uh, pretty sketchy. Um, I was like, yeah, they're probably going to kill each other. But then I was like, okay, no, they're about to just go fight. And they did. Ooh. They helped kind of ran and tell They didn't really fight too much, but they got away for the most part. But then it starts flashing the other scenes of, you know, uh, Jorah still with uh, Danny out on the battlefield fighting and just getting wrecked. Uh, more scenes of everybody else you know, getting wrecked. Sam literally crying because he saw his friend run away. And then ultimately John getting so close to the uh, the Werewood Tree, which I'll jump right back over to our map real quick. Um, oh God, I wish I could fucking go down on the map. It is the favorite Game of Thrones moment for many, and for me at least at this point. You know, as the Night King approaches really slowly, you know, Bran, they show Bran, they show Jamie, they show Brienne, they show Podrick, they show Sam, they show Hound. Everyone seems so doomed. You know, even Jonah, who hasn't taken his last breath yet. Jorah. Or Jorah. 
<laughs> I, I call him Mormont anyway, but right. like you know, he, he he doesn't die just yet. He's still barely hanging Hang on, on by barely. a thread. I mean, while literally. this music is playing, you know, he wants to save his well, his love. And then John, not mutual love, but John love. almost gets to the where to the um the Godswood, and he's in that last courtyard. But what's there to stop him? Well, the literally like broken neck, flailing, <laughs> rampant zombie dragon Viserion. Wrecking flames shit. coming out of all now it's not just a part of the neck it's like flames are coming out all sides of his cavity. did you end up watching the uh behind the scenes of how they made the whole episode the 40 I, minute one i did not watch that it is no. so cool how they actually got that that fire to be awesome like real like that they actually made this real like animatronic crane right well, molded I, these big pieces yeah. for the face to like make it look like the face on this crane that blew out flames so when the flames blew out they rolled over those proper face folds. Those, like, scale folds, yeah. So the flames would look normal, and they captured it, and, of course, put the blue filter on it, but that's where oh, it looked. Oh, that's cool. And that I did high. see a lot of making of with the cranes, just with Danny and John in general. Yeah. Like, but I did not see that. Yeah, they that's, made one with just a dragon, awesome. a fake dragon head, pretty much. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and, man, but it was pretty much like John against a dragon. It was like, he was he going to be a dragon slayer, a zombie dragon slayer? Yeah. Um, but, man, he he was only, he was so close to getting to the God's Wood, but Viserion blocks him. So now not you have everybody else struggling in Everyone's their various struggling. scenes. Theon sacrifices himself trying to, to slay the Night King. But you Which, know, uh, you, ever think, kinda... you ever think Theon would come face to face with the Night King? Pretty crazy, right? Well, I mean, once he said, I'll, I'll hang out with Bran, I'm like, Night He'll King's killing you. Yeah, right. Like, that's the person that's going to kill But what him. a proper death. I mean, I think at that point Theon kind of knew, too, oh, after Bran's God, like, you're yeah. a good man. Theon's like, yep, I have to, this is what I got to do right now. All the suffering he went through, it's like... You know, I, we all wanted him to sort of go peacefully ahead of time anyway. So if anyone was going to go down this episode, we're cool with Theon going down. Yeah. And the and, way he went down as well. And Theon, man, it, it was, I got a little, uh, you know, teared up there, but mm-hmm. it was a great scene. And um, the fact that he took the Theon's stick, cracked it in half, and, and then stabbed, stabbed him with, with it, like yeah. a broken piece. I was like, damn. I thought, well, maybe he'll just ignore him and he won't bleed to death and they'll, he'll be saved somehow. But that's not the case. But yeah, after the thank yous and goodbyes, the young dies and the music keys to that, you know, subtle music and all the main remaining characters, they're looking doomed and Night King locks eyes with Bran. And But I noticed Bran, though, after they locked eyes, he sort of just looks sort of down. He looks down at his chest. And he's looking at his chest, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. he's like, oh, I'm, I forgot, we got to kill you in your chest, bitch. And he's like, he looks back at Bran like, oh, who do you think you are? Mm-hmm. Kind of look. He totally gave him that look like, who, who the F do you think you are, boy? <laughs> And Bran's like, oh, you'll know. Wait, I've been wait. fucking playing 4D chess this whole time. <laughs> really? Is that what you, is that the whole, like... I think what he's been doing, he, Bran's set, Bran, Bran pretty much set up this whole battle. Oh, sure he did. Yeah, between him and, like... He's like, and now this has to happen, and now I, this has to happen. I think he even might, happen. they might even reveal that indirectly, the Third Eye Raven is the Lord of Light. Like, it's not like, I'm the Third Eye Raven and the Lord of Light. It's like, Third Eye Raven is the Third Eye mm. Raven, and then those... People who, uh, you know, the Red Priest, oh, when no. they, they use their Does magic... Does that mean the light sword's going to come out of Bran's chest? He, I don't know about that, but I'm okay. just saying that basically Bran was helping everybody. And anyway, yes, I think he basically set all this shit up because then we get to this amazing the clutch scene, scene. right? And I'm about to show it for you guys. Without even saying it, I'll let you watch it. Mm-hmm. And here we go. Yeah. That's John yelling at the dragon. Mm-hmm. Oh, the wispy wind of hair? Who's that? <laughs> oh, got you by the throat. Oh, gosh. But, you know, she's got lots of tricks in her bag. Very calm. Oh, shit. And... Into the chest. Boom, uh... boom, boom. Later, <laughs> later skater. Dude, when Aria that happened, in the clutch. I was just like, whoa! <laughs> and this is what's dividing the fandom, because... But why? I mean, even John said when they were planning this, the Great War out, like, you take the main guy out, and they all go down. Yeah, right. It's not like, John's not like, I call dibs. It wasn't like yeah, that. Why but not? people are wanting him, because they're thinking he built it up. But you know what? Arya's story is built up to this her entire life. She's trained for it completely. She's trained to and fight death. Three more episodes to go, so right. chill. Right. Exactly. Pete said it best. I mean, there's three episodes to go. There's a lot yeah. to say. 
I think what they wanted you to feel in this episode, they wanted you to feel helpless like they all did. They wanted you to feel like you were in that battle. They wanted you to be scared of the dark. They wanted you to feel safe with the fire. They wanted you to feel chaotic with the uh, fire and the, the storm, the blizzard, and the raining bodies, and the constant roaring of blue flames. They wanted you to feel like you were going to die and get suffocated to death by zombie bodies and see all your friends die and have no chance in hell of surviving. They wanted you to feel that. Well, they made me feel a lot of things, and it was usually <laughs> scared shitless. That was it. They but, wanted you uh, to feel that. Walkers, whites, and assorted crypt zombies, they all just fell like a pile of... Dust. Yeah. Viserion even was... And then he just... Crumbled. I, I was hoping to hear more like computerized sounds, kind of like when... Leanna took out the giant. No, oh, when right. he went down, his bones went down. It was like yeah, it was like real crumbly and like yeah. kind of melt melodic. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. I liked it. But uh, yeah, I mean, the mass dead, floundering, limp in piles was just as cool as the dragons doing their thing earlier on. It was freaking amazing, man. Yeah, I mean, it was, <laughs> dude. I mean, it was just so crazy. I, look, I think it should have been Arya at that point. Look, even a ki- most kings don't battle. Think right. Of In fact, the John was down there. For. Yeah. She's the character that needed to do this sneak up attack action. She they say she came out of nowhere, she didn't. She's just that fast and she's that quiet. You know, that's what she's been training for, dude, and she wrecked it. And not only did they foreshadow it with Melisandre, they foreshadowed it with Bran and the and Cat's Paw, which is that Valyrian dagger she used. Um, him giving it to her, not only it also being the dagger that was used to if almost kill him. you look back at the scene where he gives it to her... Yeah, the way he looks. That was the most emotion you've seen in Bran's face, as the Third-Eyed Raven, that is. Right. I mean, since he became a Third-Eyed Raven, almost no emotion except for when he handed that over to her. And handed it to her under this the... This under so the, important. You have no idea. And <laughs> under the Weirwood tree, where yeah. she ended up ultimately killing the Night King, which is perfect. Yeah. Which is true. And then he got stabbed in the place he was created, pretty much undoing him. Mm-hmm. And boom. And boom. Uh, pretty and, wild. And then, like a big puppy dog, Dragon curls up around Danny and uh, Jonah. As we said bye to jo- yeah, Jorah. Uh, as we <laughs> said bye to Jorah. Um, Once Jorah took his last breath, that was though, sad. That I, was, I, I teared up. Uh, there. That was pretty rough, man. Because he even like opened his mouth like he was about to do one of his awesome. Because you love yeah. his voice. Like he was about to be like, until my last day, Khaleesi. Yeah. yeah. But he was just like. And you're just like no. But 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 still though that 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 little look like oh, yeah oh, yeah oh. it was it, it was, was like it was like yep you know what though that look is every line you ever said in the show yeah it was it really was, it was. in a weird way, the way his lips like for <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah totally nailed it man Melisandre disappears by well she doesn't disappear she disperses the youth necklace and. Fades into dust. The end. I that mean, was a beautiful ending. It was like a ending of a Star Wars movie or something. Like it, the way the music kind yeah. of tailed off with well, her just barely tailing off. When Luke off. died in the newest movie, it was similar to that. Yeah. Because he kind of put himself all the way in the place where he yeah. wasn't physically ethereal at. self. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. But. So I thought it ended beautifully. The whole musical score was brilliant. The whole episode was fucking brilliant. <laughs> I just boarded my shorts. You have no idea, people. But you know what? The top twenty characters. We're thrown into this chaotic war against death, and the outcome is we lose a handful, we keep a lot, but really the human race has been chopped in half or more so. At I least mean, when, in terms of like when you the think north about, and above, yeah. When you think about everything that's happened from the from the neck up, you know, um, north of the wall, south of the wall, everything in the north. Like, talk about a rebuild. It's like there's no time to rebuild. They have to conquer and go to King's Landing. Because guess what? The uh, Great War is over, but the last war is still to be won. Yeah. Um, but let's go ahead and honor those who were killed. I don't actually have a picture of Leanne Mormont, but we can we talk about her a lot. Son of a, no. Here's Dolores Ed. He is the first one who died, um, getting stabbed somehow. Mm. And uh, Oh, yeah, and then, uh, of course, the Night King. We have to uh, honor him because he have, uh, died this episode. Or did he? A lot of people thinking somehow he's still around, whether he's in the Werewood Net now, whether he will become Bran because he touched Bran and marked him, or A what? villain that doesn't have to talk to be that menacing. Right. Theon. Theon, That's hats off to you. Um, great. Yeah. The actor was really great, too. You can just read the emotion on his He didn't have to say much, but there's just the emotion on his face, mm-hmm. you know, that puppy dog look he had. Um, it was great stuff. The camera's, like, focused and freaking out. Uh, and then Jorah. Jorah. Jonah Hill. Um, 
Uh, but again, dude, great. The actor's great. Um, his voice is great. He was day one. He's an OG, man. And yeah. he made it all the way to this point. And what an arc. He had one of the best arcs, I think. Between him and uh, Davos, uh, I think I want them to read me to sleep every night. Those guys. Right? They could, man. All audiobooks must be read by those two guys. <laughs> and then, of course, we had uh, Leanna Mormont killing the giant. Because, hey, dude, if she didn't do that, that giant would have wrecked shit. He already was. He yeah. had some sort of a cleaver thing. He was just sweeping. Like three or four and... dudes at a time every oh. sweep. Yeah, it was brutal, man. Um, but yeah, I mean, brilliant. I, I call it a masterpiece of an episode of television. Absolutely. The best episode of any series ever made thus far. Nothing's ever made me feel like that, ep- that episode did. Mm-hmm. The feelings and anxiety I got from watching that, I don't think, any, I don't think a movie's ever got First me like 10, that. First 10, 13 minutes, I was... I was actually scared. Yeah, I don't think like I, legitimately. I don't think I was scared watching Game of Thrones at all when I marathoned it, but this I was genuinely like scared. <laughs> we had our shit and pants on. Uh, so uh, okay, well we're uh, definitely excited for episode four and beyond. Um, many many things out there and about uh, theories are still rampant as hell. Um, all from uh, Night King still being alive to big plot twists in the end to who's going to kill who, what's going to happen. And be careful if you're still waiting to watch the episode here in 10 minutes. There are leaks for episode 4 out right now. So if you haven't seen them, just stay away from the internet. What a bunch until of BS, the... man. I know. It's, it's just like, like, just fucking why? wait, dude. This shit's coming out. Just let people fucking wait. Have your Cinco de Mayo. Have some enjoyment. Right. Relax. Kick your feet up and watch it with the rest of us, right? Right, yeah. And you know what? We'll go ahead and do a little preview right now so we can get oh. excited with you guys. Oh. So there's a new set piece at King's Landing with the big wall. Ooh, she's wearing red now. Red. She's the devil. It's like Daenerys was wearing red. Oh, yeah, by the way, um, Ghost is alive, guys, if you're wondering. He's in the trailer. Um, the dragons are both fine, too. Dragons are good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, they seem to be leaving Winterfell, um, as well as Cersei's preparing at King's Landing. Uh, seems like Sansa, the way they did that trailer, she's actually staying at Winterfell. Uh, which I wonder if Bran's staying or going. Um, that's where people are thinking if Bran stays, something will happen where that mark on his arm will fester and he'll start almost becoming the new Night King. Yeah. Some people there's, think, so there's so many, many ways you can go with it. Is, is Bran going to be the next Night King? Is John going to have to do or it? Or Danny? Because John's yeah, got fire Queen. and ice. Right. So he's got that thing going for him. Basically, Danny's. like the balance could be broken, is what mm. people are getting at. Yeah. Um, and. Look, and dude. will there be, will there be in episode four and five, someone that turns against John and Danny? Probably. Or, while we're all worried about Danny and John's relationship going into this Probably. war, and where we don't even see what the real thing that's happening, which is someone like, unfortunately, my favorite Tyrion or someone less. Whoever it is is going to be a cyclone of all sorts of backstabbings, treachery. Twists, conspiracies, and I am looking whatever. forward to seeing how the mountain Franken Mountain dies, how Cersei dies, how the mad scientist guy that got kicked mm-hmm. out of the um, Citadel, whatever. Kyburn, yeah, yeah, Kyburn. I'm looking forward Creeper. to all those characters. Like they better die, even if some of our people that we really love go down too. Like I'm really interested to in see like someone does someone get bit in half by the dragons like oh that'd be we, sweet I hope seen, so yeah did we see I don't the know if we've ever like, seen like a Jurassic Park like no but didn't before. we see one of the dragons like holding on to a body like way back in Marine or something and then the other one just sort of pull off the body like they were kind of sharing uh, it, bones. it was uh, of a cow though oh, it was a cow that's yeah, right okay. it wasn't of a human but well, yes it, maybe but still... it's it's high time for the gold company to get chomped or. something. Right. Maybe Euron gets gets pulled apart um, but that, by dragons. I, I call BS, though. If they use that giant harpoon thing and it actually works after they've already used it on the dragon at the battle over at the other Where's side the of the continent. They might end up even having a couple of them now. And I'm they thinking. might be lit up with green wildfire or something. something. Yep. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You know there's going to be green wildfire. There's going to be wildfire. Get ready. In many ways, or at least one way, it's going to happen. We had blue, red, green fire. Okay. That's just going to keep happening. Um, yes. So there's a lot to happen. Maybe the Night King story is completely done. I, I doubt it, but even if it is, it's still going to be a wild ride. I'm going to love it. Um, so I hope you guys do as well. Um, as always, enjoy the enjoyment. Please do. We will. That's for sure. And get ready for episode four here in about five minutes, guys. Go. Um, good timing. Go. Um, go. Yeah. Go, go, go. Go, 
get a lighter and a cold drink because uh, it's going to be a the cool drink. It's going to be a fucking blast, man. I mean, shit, three episodes left, but about four hours of GOT still between like the extra 20 minutes per. Um, so we got about four hours of Game of Thrones left, the OG Game of Thrones. Man, since we have a little time, I might look at that like little a portion of that 40 minute uh, making of before we delve in. Let's do it. Um, well, you guys, like we said, enjoy the enjoyment. We'll see you here next Sunday for some more GOT as we review uh, episode four of season eight. Um, in the meantime, uh, catch me here on Pan Nerdia throughout the week uh, doing various paintings and, and playthroughs and uh, plenty of videos dropping on the Pan Nerdia YouTube channel. You guys stay fly and have a good night. Yeah. <laughs>